Hello and welcome to a new series on this channel where I am starting a completely free to play account and seeing how far we can go. Uh, all I've done so far in this account is beat all the AOs and level up all the legends to level 6 to unlock the complete basic set for every legend. Uh, as a brand new player to the game, the first thing you need to be doing is going into the solo play and defeating all of the bronze AIs, all of the silver AIs and then all of the gold AIs. They will give you three packs that you can open, which you can see in my my packs area. I haven't touched them yet. Um, and also it gives you a fair little, little bit of copper here, which will get you going uh, with either dungeoneering runs or opening more packs. Uh, and as you can see as well, if you go into the quests area, uh, I've got my dailies, uh, which are loading up every day. And also, because I have reached level 20 across my uh, six five legends, uh, I've opened up my first epic quest, and that's if as soon as I complete that, that's straight away another pack at least. So, once you've uh, unlocked all the uh, unlocked all the legends, unlocked all the basic set, um, the first thing you need to do as a free to player, I, I, in my opinion, is head towards dungeoneering. As soon as you've start a free account, uh, you do get a first your first entry to the dungeon is absolutely free. So this is what we're gonna do. Now, if you know anything about Dungeoneering, uh, Ariane is by far the strongest legend in this format. So we're going to go with that. Dungeoneering is crucial to uh, free-to-play accounts, in my opinion. Uh, if you can be a good Dungeoneer, then you can quite easily build your collection very, very quickly. So, here we go. On to the first round. Uh, we're looking at Romilly Weeklack, Sticky Sanders, Skeletal Peon, Animated Buck, Mischievous Imp. Uh, in I think we'll stay away from animated book. Uh, AP gain is very, very important. So spending AP, I don't really like that in engineering. Dick Sanders, it's a bit too conditional on getting cannibals. Skills of Peon is a very, very nice draw card. And I think we'll go with Romilly for a little bit of sustain. Round two, Antifi Potion is trash. Skills of Mage, we don't want to be on one base attacks, so no. Lord Iben, again, it's just not a very good card. So I think we're going to have to go with Heffin and Drew here. Okay, White Wolf, Red Chin Chomper, Recoil, Peon, and Criara. Now, Criara is just too big. There's no way we're going to be able to ever kill that. Not even with an Enfeeble. I think we're looking at here, potentially, another Peon. Red Chin Chomper, just for a little bit of reach. Hope for some decent cards coming up here. Ah, uh, here we go. Alchemy could be good in this deck. We want to try and get some gold, uh, so hopefully we can get some spell books out. So I think we go for the Black Arm Bandit and the Alchemy here. It'd be nice if we could find a Calphite Worker to go with the Alchemy. Uh, right. Now think here probably we've got a lot of heal already with the Heffin and the Weeklax. Fire Surge is a not great, so I think we go imp toxic blowpipe. Try and find something here to you go use the uh toxic blowpipe and the red chin chomper. Right, we'll over chieftain is a very good card. So we'll shove that straight in. I think we go for the Garage of Horde Stalker. Gives us a, another win condition at the end. Oh, we've got to ruby around and we haven't got any spell books. That's not good. I don't have any gold. Let's go for a sugar and a Melzar. Come on, give me some spell books. No. Okay, right. Zamorak, the cultist. Yes, definitely. I think we go customs office because we need some more gold. And another emerald, uh, another ruby pick, and we don't have any spell books. What is this? Shugzilliana. I'm sure there's some sort of combo we can do there. Toxic Blowpipe, the Red Chim Chomper. Sure we can do something there. Round 11 now. Goblin Trickster is definitely a good card here. Dead. We use it on anything here. Nope, so that's a dead card. I think we go Rowdy Cannon here. Lunar Spellbook goes straight in. Let's take another one. Uh, no, let's go for Melzar. Let's try and make them draw lots of cannon, uh, cabbages. 
Uh, ooh, Under Dragon. Now, the Enfeeble Shug combo is here. If we no, we haven't got an Enfeeble. Um, right, we're going for Ali definitely. Easy gold gain. I think Death Lotus. Ooh, Death Lotus. That could be handy here as a finisher. We are spending a lot here. Spending 14, 17, 19, 21, 22 gold. We're only creating 18 plus 3. I'm going to take the Death Lotus here. Uh, right, we're going to go for a Zamorakian again. It's a lovely card in Dungeoneering. It's, it, in Dungeoneering, it's very difficult to play around. Or it can be very difficult to play around the asphyxiates that uh, Zamorakian occultists give you. And thank for some more gold grain. And potentially a little bit of grief. Uh, we're going for here. Customs officer. And another goblin trickster. And now let's see what diamonds we get. Oh dear. What is that all about? Um, right, Zora is bugged at the moment, so we're not going to pick that. I think we take Death and Derek here. Got plenty of gold here. And uh, uh, we could do something quite nice here with the death and the vengeance from the Lunar Spellbook. It's very hard to defend. So yeah, we're going to go for the Derek because if we if we are behind, at least we can get a little bit of AP gain and start killing things a lot more efficiently. So, we're going to uh, go into our first game against Wooden Tile, uh, who is fellow Ariane Drafty. Uh, remember, this is our, f our first free uh, run. On, uh, on this account for Dungeoneering. As soon as we've done our first free run, we're going to start opening the packs that we've already got, and then we'll look to go into the ranked uh, area straight away. Right, so what do we want to do here? We'll get rid of the Chaos Druid, get rid of the Derek, get rid of the Heffin. We'll keep the Romilly, because Ariane does like to do a lot of damage here. I think... I think that's the Mulligan we're going to go for. Okay, play the Goblin Trickster straight away. May as well think, see if we can hit something. Then draw some cards. I'd love to get the Zamorakian out here. Don't think we can. And then we'll go for the Custom Officer, because there's no way an Ariane's not going to build gold in the first chapter. Let's hope we can... We're drawing five cards now, because we're the peon. So, ooh, that Eleron is going to hurt a lot. I'm going to take 2 damage here, I'm going to take 6 damage from the Fenk, I'm going to take 5 damage from the Peon. Whoa, that's going to nearly kill me. You don't see that card played very often. Let's hope my uh, Fenk is trying hits something of his now. Nope. Joy. Okay, so he's healing up with a shield dome. I'm going to be down to... Oh, I'm going to be exactly mortal here. So I could potentially get the Derek and heal. If I can draw it. That'd be lovely. Oh, there's the Derek! Oh, the dream. Oh no, we're off 13 health. So, uh, so yeah, I think we're going to go for here. Derek into Romilly. See what we draw. I, I've got the toxic blowpipe into Zamrak and Occultist here as well. Oh, all the heals. That is not a bad chapter. I've also got the Heffin if I really need to heal again, but I am healing 10 already. That seems like a pretty good start. That Aileron has done me a massive favour, to be fair, because I would be struggling to get down to mortal otherwise. So, Goblin Trick set, though, there goes my Lunar Spellbook, I'm guessing. Yep, there it is. That's one of my big win conditions gone. Goblin Trick is such a good card in engineering, to be fair. Uh, He's tanking a hit from a Calphite Emissary for no reason. Maybe trying to predict a weapon. But the Rumbly Weeklax gets me back up to 20 health. I'm in a pretty good position here now. 
Males are. Okay, so he's going to take another four damage, which is good for me. Let's hope I don't start drawing some of these cabbages. And yelps. So he's down on 14 health, but he has got 10 gold. Maybe he's looking for a spell book of his own here. Okay, now he's got to think about trying to play around these as 68s. I might hold them back here because he's only got two cards in his hand. And you'll only have five after drawing, so he's not going to have many options. So, let's do here. Red Chin Chomper into Ogre Chieftain. In fact, no, what am I doing? I want to try and get a load of gold here. So let's go for that. We'll go for another asphyxiate. No, no, here we go. We want to go Shug to Red Chin Chomper into Ogre Chieftain and we one hit it. Yep, yeah, let's do that. Okay, we're going to get seven gold from this customs officer. Well, that's lovely. So now we can afford things like the Garage Horde Stalker for the end of the game. I highly doubt he would have drafted a Frank in this deck. Antifire Potion. Just using it for the heal. Pretty good for me. He seems to have drawn dead here. I mean, he's going to be down to 3 HP. No, he's going to be on 1 HP thanks to the 2 damage from the Wretching Chomper as well. I think we could be seeing a concession coming in here. We're in a pretty good position. That that Elleron has actually lost him the game. Because it's got me perfectly down to Mortal and then the top decked Derek. That's not bad. Okay, now. Oh, why not throw an alchemy down? Uh, right, in fact. Let's throw a couple of asphyxiates first. I don't think we Zamorak in a cultist again. Might as well throw down a Chaos Druid, see what see what potion it throws up if if he survives. Okay, so my alchemy's not gonna resolve, but that's not the end of the world. This hopefully will kill him though. Nope, he hasn't played any monsters. Okay. Run it mall. Okay, so the alchemy's not gonna resolve. Chaos Druid. Let's see what potion it gives me. Saradom in Brew. A completely useless one. Thank you very much! Okay, so we're still in a good position here. Uh, if we can gain one more gold, which we can through the Melzar. Really have to. No, nope, there we go. Got the Black Arm Bandit. Into the Heffin. Into Garajo Horde Stalker at the end. There's no reason to play anything else. Don't think there's an easy way here for, for him to come back. And one base attack, uh, two base attack and one health. He's gonna need a Heffin or some sort of heal before he can do something. Customs officer, so he's up to nine gold, which means he's in Earth Blast range now. Troll shaman, okay, but he has, oh he hasn't got the spell. So he's just played that for the armor. Ancient Spellbook. Seems a bit pointless in Chapter 5. And I'm a goblin trickster that doesn't hit anything. So, that's our first game in uh, Dungeoneering on this new account. Uh, we've won it. We're off to a good start. And uh, hopefully what you'll see on this first run if I go on a decent run, you'll be able to see how quickly the uh, the rewards stack up. As soon as you start getting over um, three wins, they do do they do increase very very quickly. Okay, so uh, one thing to remember is always collect your quests. You leave them overnight, 
they will just sit there and you won't get any new ones the next day. So we're going to go into our second game. And it's against Triforce Elf, who apparently finished in the Platinum League at the end of the first season. So if you're watching this video, it's just the second season has literally just started uh, when I've started this account. So, right, this is not the best start really. Get rid of the Chieftain, the Ziliana, get rid of the Shug and the Heffin. Let's see what else we can get. There we that's what we want to see. Right. That's not a bad starting hand. Get the Zamoraki to cultist out here. So we go Trickster. The Peon. My time for preparation. No, we don't. Slow. We go Trickster into Mischief Simp. Into Toxic Blowpipe. Into Zamoraki and Occultist. So we draw the couple a couple of asphyxiates. The Fenk and Strain is not going to affect me. God for that. Because I'm still going to one-hit this trickster. Oh, that's got rid of his Lunar Spellbook. That's a nice little snipe there. Mischief Simp, what can we draw? It's a Shug. Okay, that, maybe that'll be useful for something. So he's on 8 gold. He's looking for a Spellbook. Hopefully he's only drafted one. We're not going to get the heal from the Blowpipe, but... It's not the main reason for the card, it's for the reach into the Zamrakid Occultist. Okay, so now he's got something to think about with these asphyxiates. I'm going to hold on to them though. Uh, he's only got a few cards, so he's not got many options. So, uh, let's not waste them. Ooh, that's a spell book. Can't band it into Elzar into Spellbook. Won't overdraw. Well, I, I will overdraw, but I'll have the spells. Let's go for it. We want to try and get it out as early as we can. Give ourselves some options. Rants. Okay, so he's trying to reach into something. That's a Zamrakin of his own. So uh, there'll be a couple of asphyxiates coming down soon. Oh, if I'd have played my first asphyxiate, he'd have done taken 14 damage. Oof. He's got lucky there. He's he has got very lucky there. Okay, so he's just just knocking us down a little bit. Could do with a heal or two here. Alright then, hopefully start drawing some cabbages instead of the books he's looking for here, because he's he is set up to buy a spell book straight away. Okay, so now we have got a lot of griefy cards here. He knows I can't play the asphyxiates early on, because I don't have the gold. Maybe forced into playing the boost here. Darek. Right, borrowed power to Rowdy Cannon here. On vengeance. Add in three cards. I'll be on nine. That's eighteen damage. No, it's not. It's fourteen damage. Plus the four there. That's at eighteen. I've still got the boost and the group heal and double asphyxiate in hand. Let's see what happens here. Right, he's enfeebling. Oh, you. Oh, I thought that was no good chieftain then. If he'd have hit the Ogre Chieftain just when I'd borrow powered, that would have been amazing. <laughs> okay, so he's gained a base attack, but he has given me some armor, which is nice. I've got to try and burst him down here enough so that the extra base attack at the end isn't going to affect him. Oh, and more when we're in the middle of the chapter. That's that's interesting. I'm going to take 4 damage from the Skeletal Peon, which the armor I've just got will actually absorb most of. And that isn't going to result really, uh, to remove anything, because I've already played the Spellbook. Okay, so I've got him down to 15 health. I'm on 18, however, so I'm not in a great position. 
Now, he hasn't played around any of the grief cards here, so... Very tempted to slow him down a boost. Yep. Got to here. Uh, and then, can we shug into anything? No, we cannot. Just throw down a cannonball. We can still draw all the cards. See what this boost hits! And, ooh, he's as fixed as missed, because I didn't play anything. He's going to take 7 damage from a Goblin Trickster, so that's good for me. And he knows it wouldn't have done anything, so I'm not quite sure why he's played that. Group Hill misses, but I am in a decent position now with health. I managed to get him down to 7 HP. Whereas I'm on 22. One chapter to go. So if I can draw some gold gain here. I think a little bit easier than Commander Ziliana. I must prepare to confront my fellow adventurers. Okay. Now has he played his boost? I Ah oh, he's conceded. I didn't have to work out if he'd played his boost or not. That was not as Excellent. So we are two and zero on our first dungeoneering run. Right, we're going to go into our third dungeoneering round this episode. See what we come up against now. So far, it's been a couple of Ariannes, and we've fared relatively well. It's a Linza. Now, Linza could be very awkward to, get, to come up against, depending on what they've drawn. They've got it. If, they, if they've drawn a couple of Dust Devils and Karams, then it's very, very difficult to beat. Um, as well, they've got the other way around, whereas if they've drawn a couple of Tetsu Katanas, then you're pretty much screwed. Looks like I'm going first. Okay, so... Do we want... No, uh, I don't think we keep the Red Chin Chomper. The Shug. Yeah, keep the Red Chin Chomper. Okay, so we're going to play Feng first. We are going first. Hopefully he's going to be trying to go into something like his own Feng. That would be nice, because that would be 10 damage. Uh, definitely want to get the Mischief sound Imp out sometime. Might as well do it there, because I can still one-hit it. Uh, two. Elzar and Goblin Trickster. So we're going to add some cabbages, and then hopefully take away a, a Tetsu Katana. And he's only played two cards here. Let's hope I can hit something with this. Oh, it's a Rolo, so he's still going to one-hit it. It's a Skeletal Peon, so at least I can cycle through my deck trying to find my spellbook. Nice if I could get another Melzar off here. Make him keep drawing cabbages. What's he going into? It's a skeletal warrior, so he's tr he obviously didn't have the best. Oh, there we go. There's the Tetsu Katana. And that is why a Goblin Trickster is such a good card in Dungeoneering. Okay, let's see what we draw here. Shug, a Garage of Horde Stalker, and another Shug. Right. So we're going to play the Peon early on. No reason not to. Um, do we carry that around? Need to, is there? No, we'll, just, we'll just draw some cards and get some um, gold. Rowdy Cannoneer and Death. By Garage or Horde Stalker. Okay, so he's building up to buy a big weapon here. Just gotta hope he doesn't draw anything useful. It is good to see you again. Oh, it's a rant. To a white wolf. So he's still cycling through his deck trying to find something. Oh, I can play a max value death here. But I really want to combo it with something. Let's see what I can draw.
Okay then. Shug. To toxic blowpipe. Shug. Oh no, we want to shug first. The Ogre Chieftain. Some cards at the start. So hopefully, if he's got a big weapon, that's going to do a lot of damage. We're going to shug it so it becomes a 10 5, deal 3 damage to it, and 1 hit it. That's the plan anyway. I'm ready. Shug's such a, such a useful card in engineering trying to help you kill big creatures that you, that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. He's playing some cabbages. Hopefully he's enjoying these. Troll chucker. Okay. Come on, buy a big weapon. Black arm bandit. Ah, oh, this is annoying. I'm only going to do six damage with this now. Ah, oh, well. It's especially annoying if he buys a weapon now. No, it's another, it's another cabbage. Okay, so he's drawn at least one of the three cabbages in his deck. So Melzar is doing work. Okay, it's still pretty close, this match. Both got a lot of gold, similar health, still on two base attack. Now, can I get this Samurai in a cultist out somehow? Right, I want to get that out together. That's 12 damage. That's 20 damage there. Quite got enough gold. That's that's hoping he doesn't... Oh, that's, that's so risky. I might as well keep hold of that, actually, because I'm going first. So... What can we do here? Doing a fair bit of damage there. Right, we might as well tank that first, actually. And we can guarantee we've got the gold. Do try and finish him off. Go for the Chin Champion first, and then we can always go Cannoneer right at the start of the next chapter. Okay, we're looking for the Death Death Lotus combo here. Okay, so that's another six gold. Death, Death Lotus, here we go. Talk chill. Oh, he's removing two health as well after I've played death. Oh, he's so low. Tormented Demon. Oh, yes. I win. Because of the damage he takes from the Tormented Demon. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, what a way to win a Dungeoneering game. Death isn't the total useless card that I thought it was. From there, just tanking the hit from the Tormented Demon just to finish him off. Okay, so we're 3-0 and with our first engineering run. And we're getting closer to those Platinum Ingots that we spend on more engineering runs in the future. Okay, so I think that's a good a good place as any to finish our first episode. Um, I'm going to be trying to do this as often as I can over the next few uh, few weeks. So all of you who are free to players can kind of see the best ways of building your collection early on. Because um, I know it's disheartening when you come up against people who have got more cars than yourself. But it really doesn't take long at all to build your collection up. So uh, I'll see you all next time.